Number three then from the 2006 High Maths paper two, tangent to a curve, in this case a parabola. Part A for four marks, find the equation of this tangent. Now there are actually two ways of doing this, only one is shown in the marking scheme this time. The other way is a lengthier way, I'll put that in under alternatives at the end. The most direct way to do it in this case is simply to say, right, you've got a line, you want the equation of a line, right, so it must look like y minus b equals mx minus a, because I know a point in the line rather than where it cuts the y-axis, so I'm not using y equals mx plus c. That point will give me the a and the b, and the gradient of the line will come from the gradient of that curve at that point, which is given by the derivative. If you've got a curve, y is some function of x. At every point in this curve, there are two things. There's a height, which is the y-coordinate, and there's a direction. There's a slope, and that slope at that point is given by, the gradient of that slope is given by f dashed x. So that's what must be true if that line's a tangent. The gradient of that line must be the same as the derivative of the curve at that point. So I'll just put a note of this again here. y equals x squared minus 14x plus 53. And the gradient at this point will be the same as the derivative. That's the first mark, knowing to differentiate. The derivative gives you the slope at each point in a curve rather than just its height y. Actually carrying out the differentiation, so m will equal 2x minus 14, multiply by the power, take one off the power. If you like multiply by the power, take one off the power, drops it to zero. But usually with a, a linear term, you just think it's the coefficient. Differentiating gives you the second mark. And then finding the, finding the gradient, gives you the third mark, and you get that from the value of x wherever you want to calculate the slope, the gradient. And here the x-coordinate is 8. So if x equals 8, that means that the gradient's going to be 2 lots of 8 minus 14, so the gradient's going to be 16 minus 14, 2. That's the third mark. Now you know everything you need to know to finish off this equation. So what is the tangent? Well, y minus the y-coordinate oops, is the gradient, 2 times x minus the x-coordinate, and that's sufficient to get you that fourth mark. But again, I'm going to tidy that up because I always do. So that means y equals 2x, and then you've got minus 16 plus the 5, so you've got minus 11. Now it turns out you need this for part b, and in part b, you get a mark for finally tidying it up into this form, but I'll not put that in yet. I'll add it to my diagram. This line then is the line y equals 2x minus 11. So part b then, show that the tangent found in part a, so it's the same line here, is also a tangent to this other parabola, and find the point of contact, this time for five marks. Again, there's going to be two ways of doing this. One way would be to show that, since you know both of these equations, that the line and the parabola intersect at only one point, making it a tangent. An alternative way, which again I'll show at the end, because you probably do the substitution first of all, would be just to try and find the equation of that line from scratch, knowing that this line has got gradient 2, so this time trying to find the point of intersection and feeding it into y minus b, etc. So the most obvious approach here is the one I'll do at this point, which is that line of known equation will be a tangent to this curve of known equation if it only hits it once, if there's only one solution to the substitution. So if I call that 1 and I call that 2, then I'll go ahead and find intersections. So if I'm looking for an intersection, I'm going to substitute 1 in 2. So that means where that reads y, I'm going to replace it with 2x minus 1. So 2x minus 11, that is. Minus 11 will equal the rest of this. Negative x squared plus 10x minus 27. 
Notice it's a negative x squared because it's upside down. Not that that matters at all, really, here. Well, just bring that over to form a nice little quadratic. So bring the x squared over, bring the 10x over, and that'll be a mi 2 minus 10 is minus 8x. Bring the 27 over, so that'll be plus 27, and that'll be plus 16 equals 0. Well, there's a big wad of marks just for doing this. The first of them is for this little harmless equation here, which you would have naturally tidied up. Originally, you found that in the form of y minus b and left it like that, sitting raw with the numbers. If you then tidy it up, which you would, there's a mark for that. Having the equation in the line in the form of y equals mx plus c, ready for a substitution. There's a mark for doing the substitution. And there's a mark for tidying it up into a quadratic. Now, that, hopefully, should be a perfect square if you only want one result. So, x times something squared, and that looks like minus 4. So it doubles up for a minus 8. So x minus 4 squared equals 0. Now that's not quite the final mark. That's 3 already. There's 1 round about here, and then there'll be 1 for the coordinates, because the final mark's for what the coordinates of q. Now here's where a statement needs to come in. Before you just go in with x equals 4, you'd have to make a statement which would say something like, maybe I'd put it at the side, but I've not left myself enough room, make a statement like this. If you've got that, that means you've got equal roots, which effectively means one answer. Equal roots means that line is a tangent, because you've only got the one point of intersection. That would be the appropriate way to do it, make this statement. Now you get the mark by factorising it to show that it forms a square, so there's only one answer, and making the statement the two together. There is an alternative, but you wouldn't really use that alternative unless it just said, show the line's a tangent, and that was the end of the question. If you have to then go on and find the coordinates, you're better actually finishing off this bit here. If the line question had said just, show the line as a tangent, finish, don't bother with Q, once you got to this step, you could then have found the discriminant and shown that the discriminant is zero. You could have said, well, b squared minus 4ac equals negative 8 squared minus 4 times 1 times 16. And that equals 64. And that's minus 64, which equals zero. And if it equals zero, that means you've got, same as before, equal roots. So line is a tangent. But if you have to go in and find the point, it's, it's much quicker just to do this instead of having to write all this out, which is, if, of course, just the one mark here. Which means from this then, that x equals 4 is the only answer. And if x is 4, putting it back in, substitute x equals 4 in whichever one takes your fancy, which is this one. And 1 means that y is going to be 2 times 4 minus 11, so that's 8 minus 11, which is negative 3. So that Q is the point 4, negative 3. Now, after all that, that's the fifth mark. Now, before I go to the alternatives for A and B, I'll mention that other way that they suggest in the marking scheme for finding the point Q, which is, again, the straightforward substitute them in to show there's only one point as an answer. But this time they're suggesting, what if you substituted, instead of substituting for y, what if you substituted for x? And of course you would never consider doing that, because that means you'd have to write 2x equals y plus 11. So for the direct substitution, x equals a half of y plus 11. And then substitute that into that. Just ignore this bit that suddenly appeared in the side about functions. I've edited it out because it just took too long. I'll just start, start this off to show how awkward this is to substitute. So if I was to substitute that into this instead, I would have y, I'm not replacing that, negative x squared means negative this thing squared, hey, I'll just go straight in with squaring it. So that's a quarter, that's squaring the half of y plus 11 squared, plus 10 times that, I'll write that as 10 over 2, there's a reason for this, rather than just simplifying it down to 5, minus 27. You've got this thing to work through. You would never consider doing that. But this would be the technique you would use if you had to use this for some reason, because there were fractions both way, ways. How can you rearrange this? Get rid of the fractions first. 
4s will turn everything into proper integers. So you've got 4y will be negative of y plus 11 squared. 4 times this will be 2 times 10 is plus 20 lots of y plus 11 minus now 4 times that. So that's 2808. So tidying this up even more takes ages, doesn't it? Maybe I'll do this the two steps in one, square the bracket and make all the terms negative at the same time. So it's negative square the first, twice the product is 22, so negative 22y. 11 squared is 121, so minus 121 plus 20y, plus that'll be 220 minus 108. And you go away, bring it all over. y squared. There's minus 2 to bring over as plus 2 to boost that up to plus 6y. And then over here we've got minus 129 plus 220, so that's a minus 9, so it goes, goes across as a plus 9 equals 0. And then, fair enough, that becomes y plus 3 squared equals 0. So there's only one answer. But only one answer for y doesn't necessarily mean a line is a tangent. You can draw lines on a parabola so that you have two points with the same y-coordinate and they would be horizontal lines strictly speaking if you do it this way and you wouldn't look at that if you do it that way you'd have to make a statement to that effect so you could say yes equal roots equal roots but you'd also have to say this and the line that you're substituting in is not horizontal but since the line isn't horizontal then it will just be one point, and then you can carry on and say, that means that y is negative 3, and then you substitute it into this here. x is a half of negative 3 plus 11, so it's a half of 8, which is 4. So again, you've got the point q is 4, negative 3. But look how much harder that is. Now, I'm going to do part A again, an alternative way, not given in the marking scheme because it's quite lengthy, but it would be the approach you would have to use if you didn't know how to differentiate this curve. If for some reason or other the equation of this curve was of a form that you didn't know how to differentiate. And that's a technique which was essentially the same as you did to prove you've got a tangent. Take the general form of a line and find what that would have to be to make it touch only once. Well, if that line's a, a line, it would have to look like y oops, minus b equals mx minus a. I do know that it goes through the point 0.85, so y minus the y coordinate, as I don't know what the gradient is, x minus the x coordinate, that would have to be the form of this line swiveling about the point 0.85, the only unknown is which way do I face, what's the gradient? And then you would say, well, if that's going to be a tangent, it only intersects once. I'll just take one final step here and call that mx minus 8 plus 5. So there's the line that I want to be a tangent. So that's just a case of which way do I make it face as it spins around the point P. So it actually lies as a tangent flush against the side. Well, I'll substitute the equations and try and find what I need m to be to get one answer. I'll put 2 into 1 in this case to preserve x squared. So I'll say that substitute 2 into equation 1. So instead of that y, I'll write this. x squared minus 14x plus 53 equals this bundle. I might as well multiply it out while I'm at it. mx minus 8m plus 5. Bring it all over to form a quadratic equal to 0. x squared minus 14 minus 8. Sorry, minus 14 minus m will be minus, I'll just write it down as 14 plus m, lots of x. 53 minus the 5 will be 48, plus 48, and then plus 8m equals 0. Yeah, there's your quadratic, and there's the three coefficients. 1, negative this, and then the 48 plus 8m. Now you would say, if you want that line to be a tangent, that means you want equal roots which means you want b squared minus 4ac to equal 0. I'll not list separately a, b and c. So b squared is this thing. Now I'm squaring it so the negative would disappear. I'll just put it down. So negative 14 plus m squared minus 4 times the first 
times the last, which is 48 plus 8m, should equal 0. Now, squaring that makes it positive, so forget that. So square the first, 196. Twice the product, so it'll be double 14 is 28. Square the last, m squared. Minus 4 times 48, that's 3292. Minus 192, and then also minus 32m should equal 0. Tidy that up. M squared, now what about the m's? You've got 28 minus 32, so that's minus 4m. Numbers, plus 4 equals 0. So in fact you've got minus 2 squared equals 0. And there's only one answer to that. The gradient equals 2. And then you can feed it back into this, and there's your answer. The gradient's 2, so what was that equation? Go back to either form. So in this one it was y minus 5 is 2 times x minus 8. Now that would be an alternative if you didn't know how to differentiate this. Now an alternative to part b would be to find the equation of this line, ignoring the fact that you know it already, and show that the result is the same result, so it is the same line. So it would be, how would you find the equation of this line knowing the gradient is 2, though? So you'd start off with this. You've got y equals negative x squared plus 10x minus 27. I want to find the equation of this line, so I need a point on it which I've yet to find, but I do know the gradient is 2, though. Differentiate that to get the gradient. So dy by dx is going to be negative 2x plus 10. So doing it this way, maybe I should put a note, m equals, would be one mark for part b. Then you would say, well, I know that m is 2. So that means negative 2x plus 10 is equal to 2. That's the second mark for this approach. And then simply solve for that. There's only one mark for this because I could jump straight to it. So 2x equals 8, which means that x equals 4. That doesn't get you the mark yet because I need to find the y coordinate as well. Substituting that back into this means that y is going to be the negative of 4 squared plus 10 times 4 minus 27. Negative 16 plus 40 minus 27 which comes to negative 3. Which means that Q is the point 4, negative 3. So, that's a mark. But now you've got to show that these in fact coincide. Because you could have one parabola of this with gradient 2. This parabola here may well in fact have gradient 2. And you've just found the point on it. But that doesn't guarantee that these lines actually join together. Now I've got to show that the line through the point 4, negative 3 with gradient 2 is in fact the same line as this. So we'll just go back to that then. So what is the tangent? y minus b is mx minus a. y plus 3 is 2 times x minus 4. And this is where I have to rearrange it all. So y equals 2x minus 8 minus 3 minus 11, which is the same line. So you'd have to make a statement which equals same line as part A, we could just say. And that would be the final mark. In fact, oh, sorry, there was a mark missing. That was the mark just for this substitution here. That mark, of course, is this combination here. So that would have been an alternative to part B.